You're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. Listen, man. Yes. Listen, we got the one, the only, the yes. legendary Alicia. <laughs> yes. I like the one. Hell's man. Kitchen Keys. <laughs> I mean, now listen, let me tell you something. Another day. We get invited to, Gil think we going to a concert. I, I, I Listen, I told my wife, I said, too, we going to Alicia Keys concert tonight. Yeah. She like, yes. <laughs> oh, well, we got to hear it wasn't a concert. It was a play. A musical. A musical. Listen here. That shit was <laughs> un-fucking no, but see, believable. Man. Like, first of all, the actress... And the actress that was that played in this musical yes. was unbelievable, especially that girl that played the lead. Allie. Allie. Her name is Malia Joy Moon. Oh. When I tell you singing, what camera is me? Right. Where's Her my camera? Ass <laughs> off. I'm talking about in the middle of singing and just going to a laugh like <laughs> I'm like sure oh, oh, shit. I'm talking about the dad, the mom. Yes. Jersey. Nuck. Shout out to Nuck. Hey, I remember, you remember Nuck. Nuck. Yeah. Because <laughs> Nuck almost went to jail. Yeah. <laughs> they, they almost booked Nuck. You know what I mean? Um, it was really, it was really, really dope. Like, I had never been to nothing like that before. Wow. So you so, never actually been to a Broadway musical before? Ever in my life. That's why I wanted you there. And for me to think I'm going to an Alicia Keys concert to get there, <laughs> and we're like 20 minutes in, my wife's like, let me see that book. Like, <laughs> babe, Alicia's not coming out tonight. This is. <laughs> She's not. Like, she loved it, though. Wow. My wife, but she likes things like that. Right. She loved that sh She was like, that was so dope. Oh, my God. I'm so excited because, you know, this this Hell's Kitchen musical is something that i um, definitely been working on for a long time. And I think that the, the story is about 17-year-old Allie, who really is being raised in Hell's Kitchen. And she's being raised by her kind of overprotective single mother, Jersey. And she really wants to find her direction. She wants to find who she is. She's feeling kind of rebellious. She's looking for her identity. She's looking for, for ways out of the four walls that just feels like it's always suffocating her. And, and so you really get a chance to experience this young, this young girl in this moment in her life that I think what makes it so relatable is that we've all been in that moment before. Yes. In that place where you feel like nobody really understands you, where you feel like... You really just want to be who you are, but who are you really? And how do you figure out who you are? And how do you not get caught up in the traps of the world, which is usually what the people that love you want to help you avoid. But while they're trying to help you avoid doing that, they kind of like suffocating you at the same time. So anyway, um, I think that this, this musical has been so exciting to put together, specifically because I do think that it mixes worlds together. It mixes modern music with you know, this kind of theatrical, musical style. And because it's Hell's Kitchen and because it's set in the 90s and because it's New York City, New York City story in New York City, I love that people who wouldn't normally think to come, when they see it, they really feel connected to it. And that's been a really big part of the process. Now, I advise anybody who, listen, even if you're not in the musicals, you're not in the plays, you're not in... This, this like got me ready to go to see another one. Let's go. I was like opening the door. I was like I didn't even <laughs> to do this. Shit is like that's that's you got to be so talented because it's like right. it's almost like they're acting out a real movie right now, like mm. on one take. It's like you don't get a chance to say, "Oh, cut! Hold on, do that over." You, you, your vocals was off a little right. bit. You got. It's like no. Once it's action, it's like they're they're like literally doing a movie right here in front of you, like for an <coughs> hour straight, an hour and some change straight, where they're telling you the story and they're acting the story and they're singing it, and that shit blew my mind. You know, was it your story that they were telling? You know, it's not it's not my story. It's not autobiographical. There is definitely the experiences that I've experienced growing up in New York City definitely inspire some pieces of the story. But it's not my story. I'm not in the play. One thing, I'm not in the play. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not autobiographical. 
But there are pieces of my story that are, you know, woven in. And so there are some inspirations of my experience growing up in New York. You know what's crazy? Because I was in the theater reading it all wrong. <laughs> I knew it was your story. Because certain things the mom would say and your mom would be over there like, yeah. <laughs> Dad sitting there all quiet. I'm like, oh yeah, this is <laughs> definitely her. I was like, this this is definitely her right now. She t- <laughs> but now come to find out your mom was just enjoying the play. Right, huh? right. No, but there's, you know, there's it's definitely real. It's very real, it's very honest, it's very raw, it's very authentic. And you're gonna feel that genuine nature because of the fact that there are pieces of real people that have been pulled into the themes. So it gives you that, you know, just you feel it's not like you're in a you're not in a fantasy you're in like this very real place. So um, so I love that. I it's love crazy because I really thought it was your story. I, in my mind, I left out. Right. I felt like that whole story was about you. I was like, I'm, we, we driving home like that's where she got a talent from because, you know, mm-hmm. her dad was performing, too. <laughs> you know, he was hell I know of a, a lot saint. of people do that. A lot of people <laughs> feel like, wait, did your dad? <laughs> Right, if I ain't got you, and I'm mm. like, no, <laughs> yeah. I wrote it. What you talking about? But that's how it came off. Right? I, was like, I was like, okay, that was you know, a hell of a singer too. <laughs> you know what? This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now we talking uh, distilled five times, filtered three times for a clean, crisp finish. We're talking uh, the official vodka of Barstool Sports. We're talking uh, when you get to the counter, make sure you got one of these with you. Why would you have anything else other than New Amsterdam vodka? Because when life ain't going your way, shout out New Amsterdam vodka. When you caught your wife cheating today, shout out New Amsterdam vodka. When you placed a bet and it didn't go your way, shout out New Amsterdam vodka. So make sure when you're out and about at your local liquor store, don't you dare walk past this. You scoop it up. You pass it off like Caitlin. Yeah, shoot it like Caitlin. Rebound it. Get it to the counter. Boom. Guess what? It's good with juice, soda, on a rock, straight up. Or you can make a classic New Amsterdam meal. <laughs> That's all up to you, buddy. But New Amsterdam vodka, great vodka. Right. For the per- people that wasn't there, for the viewer that's watching this, I got to set the scene. I pull up, right? So I pull up in my car now. I'm a dude never been to Broadway, never been to a theater in my life. So I but pull he did up. do prison plays, though. He yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, you could have hit me. I could have played in the joint, but I ain't even right. throw my credentials okay. out there like that. He did some prison plays. You know what I mean? So I pull up, I'm, you know, and I'm like, I'm, I pull up and I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm uh, going to show you something. So I pull up and I'm looking. I see all these different signs. See the hell kitchen, John. So I see all these people outside. So I'm like, damn, they're going to all these different, you know, they're going to the different Jones. This John nice. So I go park down right next to it. So I come back out. I'm like, damn. No, these people going to one joint. <laughs> No, I'm thinking, because I'm thinking, like, I don't know the whole setup. Yeah. Because I'm like, all right, you got the parking lot right here, then right next to the parking lot, you got the, uh, right next to the parking lot you had the Hell's theater. Kitchen. Right. But it's all these other signs all on the street. So I'm right. thinking, like, you know, just, you know. Man, I get I get to there. So I get I get over there. I call Gianni. I'm like, yo, this shit is a movie out here. First of all, <laughs> Can it's I raining. Get in? I'm, I'm a half an hour early. It's raining. <laughs> nice job. Right? So I'm like... Well done. So I see, you know, we see the people that's working. Wow, well, what's up? I'm like, yo, what's up, man? I said, listen, man, I got some tickets. He said, oh, no, don't worry about it. You cool. But I, but people just keep coming. It's raining because it's I, raining. I, I was there. No, I'm saying, I, you know, so, 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 so it's raining, right? Let me show you something. I'm out there in the rain and I'm like, yo, this thing, look. You didn't get a chance to see it probably. No. It was it was crazy. The, I had the crowd. It was on my story. Yeah, yes. he, he posted it. Look, I know look, of it. You can see it right there, but you can't. See, it won't go up. I had sixty four thousand views on that joint. Oh and man! And I tell you, hell, but but that was that was where it was at. But I showed the crowd like it was just so many people out there, right? That's and it's crazy. raining, and they came like they came. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm gonna get this. So so I'm like so I so I get here. I never been to play before. And that theater had never been to none of this, so I don't even know what to expect. So I get in here. I'm like, oh, he come when we go sit down. Whole time, 
Alicia is a row ahead of us across. We don't never peep. We don't right. never peep the scene. Another. She's That's sitting how in the you crowd. know that shit was good. <laughs> she's sitting right. in the crowd, right? Her mom, her, her mom, her dad, her team. So I'm like, all right, bet. My dad wasn't there, but that's all right. I thought it was. That's we, all right. Go ahead with the ball head. He right. didn't look like the ball on the stage. So yeah, I put it yeah, yeah, we did. We put it together. <laughs> that's that's the head right there. Right, right next, next to a mom. mom. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? So we put that together. That's our own stuff. You know, black people put stuff together <laughs> as they go on. <laughs> and it just, it just so you know, most of the time you motherfuckers be wrong. Right. Just, like, yeah. <laughs> just like we was wrong. <laughs> trying to put some shit together all the time. And then you oh, wrong. Oh, here we go. Look, 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 look. Yo. Okay. Let's go. It was crazy out there, right? So, hey. so we out there, right? So I go in there, we sit down. I don't even know what to expect. I just see the HK on there. So I'm like, damn, they gonna perform in front of that? I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm like, that's not a lot of stage to work with. Right. That's not a lot to operate on. So I said, I don't know what they're gonna be doing. That John came on, they keep telling hey, everybody gonna get dark, the lights get, I'm talking about, they came out, it was you know, it was guns blazing. So mm. now I'm sitting in there, and as it going, she's saying, hey, Mike, the energy, everything is coordinating, everything is together. The first thing that came to my mind, I said, oh, we missing out. Young kids from the ghetto got to be here. Mm. They got to see this. And the reason y'all got to see this is because in the black community, only thing that we want to do is be f***ing entertainers. A lot of times we think about rap music. Mm. But as I'm looking at this, my mind is running. I'm real. I'm, like I was telling you, I'm on detail. I'm thinking about somebody could be making money. Whoever pulled that sign back, the way the piano is going around the joint, mm. all these dancers, the dudes in the back playing the instruments. I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity here. To, mm. Who produced this? Who wrote it? Uh, costume, you know, me and G, costume of design. And I'm looking at like, yo, we yes. really behind the eight ball and we really got to tap in because mm -hmm. not just, it wasn't just about Hell's Kitchen. I'm looking at the whole block and I see all these these shows and I'm like, hold up. Mm. Is we up here like that? Is mm -hmm. we like is we missing out on entertainment? Is we missing out on some next level stuff to be a part of a team? Right. So I'm looking at like that. I said, damn, this joint need to be packed where mm -hmm. busloads of kids need to come and see this show yes. so they can see that the opportunities is endless and um, yes. there's no limit on what we could be. And we're we not just rappers, we're not just athletes and sh we're not just, you know, it's bigger than that. We not, it's not about being an IG, popping on IG or being, it's bigger than that. It's levels to this because Malia, the lead in this, this is her first time. Right. This is the first time and she's going to the moon. I'm telling yes. you right now, I'm telling you, me and I was with a game. Right. Tony, holla at AK, I'm talking about Tony. I don't know who Tony is. I just know that's the name of the award. So, Tone. Oh, that is? Yeah, Tone. Oh, because it, it, that, I'm going to keep it on. Hell's Tone, Kitchen don't be show. playing, Tone. No, Hell's Kitchen should know Tony about three fucking, four fucking Tone, times Hey, Tone, this year. make sure you holler at them. Whoever you at, wherever yeah. you is, holler at them. Don't be, now, if it don't go, we going to holler. We're going to have to come see you. But, but I'm just sitting back, and right, I'm like. I'm like Tony got to throw about listen. three, four awards that way. Yeah. Wow. It, it I can't even, of, I, I don't do musicals and plays, but I either. can't picture a, a musical or a play being better than that. Mm. <sighs> Thank you. I'm that trying to, blew my mind. I'm trying to figure out um, just, it was so much energy, it was so much information, and it was so, it was so much truth of our community. And mm. the stuff that goes on, the real life stuff, mm -hmm. how the mom, how mom is like, you know what? Overprotective of a baby. But it gets to a point where the mom like, in order to have a relationship with my daughter, I got to let her breathe. Mm. I don't yes. want her to run away from me, and I want her to still be here. You had that. That's right. real in the hood. You had mm. the, uh, the the relationship. Sometimes the father's not there, so mm -hmm. a young lady is looking for her father and men. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you see. So it was a lot of things that I seen. And then um, you seen the woman, you know, even though the father wasn't, she always just wanted to keep believing in him. Yeah. But, you know, I think just jumping in there, I think, like, also, you do feel, first of all, thank y'all so much for everything you're saying. I really feel you. I want to go back to what you said yeah. about busloads of kids. We, yeah. we, we ain't we coming right back there. But the, but the thing about every character and that is portrayed in this is complex. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So he, the father, Davis, who's played by Brandon, Vic, Brandon Victor Dixon, who's an incredible actor, artist, singer. I mean, mm -hmm. he's out of this world. He opens his mouth. You can't even help it. And yes, their relationship didn't pan out in the way that, you know, allowed them to stay together. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, her mother is raising her mm -hmm. and he is flawed and the mother's flawed. Right. You know what I mean? But you do see how how it happens. And that's what I like about it. Nobody's just kind of characterized as like you fucked up or you ain't this. Right. It's like we're all humans trying to figure out how mm -hmm. do we figure this thing out? Because right. it's com complicated and it's hard to to kind of figure it out, you know? Mm -hmm. And I and I appreciate that. And we worked actually really hard on that for each character so that it wouldn't just kind of generalize or fall into a stereotype or things like this. Mm -hmm. It's really important for me you yeah. know, to represent us in a way that is reflective of the fact that there's a that we have much diversity to us, you know. Right. It's a so lot. I love that you brought that up and I love that that came off where you could feel the tenderness, you could feel the confusion, you could feel the vulnerability, you could mm -hmm. feel the way that you kick yourself and you're like, why mm -hmm. did I try again when I know it's kinda not gonna work right. every time? But sometimes, right. sometimes as us human beings, some people to us no matter what the outside see, mm. is worth the work. Mm. See, as we, as we, you know, as I'm growing myself, you know, you grow in life, you realize that some people is worth the work and uh, ain't nothing falling out the sky already made. That's right. You, you know, uh, you got to find the people that's willing to be, have foundation that's based off being vulnerable, mm. uh, genuine, real, transparent. Yeah. So, so even if you looking at it, like for me looking at it my first time, I think everybody going to have an idea what they think it's about, but you see through the, acting, right, mm. through the storytelling, that this is just everyday, regular people, no matter what race you is, no mm. matter what your gen, you know, what, what identity, however you see yourself, no matter, everybody was in there. It right. was, it was a, it was a mix of everybody on earth inside of this theater. Mm. And it was so many standing ovations. It was so many, so much emotion. And it's like, everybody felt like, it was like a emotional roller coaster of, during the storytelling how people was reading and how people was cheering for certain people like your mom. Right. Your mom killed it at one time when she was singing. She brought a house down okay, on that her, joint. Her, her name is Jersey oh, yeah, in the yeah, play. Yeah, Jersey. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> she is the mother of Allie. <laughs> But I feel I you, you. I understand. Yeah. Everybody yeah, feels like this. I told you when we see this, this was, this was your story. <laughs> your mother killed me. <laughs> so her name is Shoshana Bean. She's also <laughs> unbelievable. And I feel you so much mm -hmm. because this is, look, this is a story of a woman who's a single mother raising a young girl mm -hmm. in, in Hell's Kitchen. And the father, who is Davis, you know, they, they have a deep passion. And you can see that they have a deep connection, mm -hmm. although it, the relationship just hasn't worked out. Pop lit and that so ass up. there is a moment where Davis comes back in because she calls him and says, help, help me with Allie. I need some help. I can't do it by myself. Mm -hmm. He comes in and he wants to try his best to help. He genuinely wants to help. Mm -hmm. and But his nature is that he's kind of unavailable. He's un, he's emotionally unavailable right. and he doesn't recognize the way that this might affect his daughter. You know what I mean? And so, you know, he's, he's, he's just saying he has to go do a few things and he doesn't realize that that feels like to his daughter that mm -hmm. he's leaving. Yeah. He didn't mean that he was leaving. He just meant he was going to do a thing and he'll be back when right. he comes back. But for her, it's like, you're leaving again. Yep. So anyway, Jersey is so upset that she called him to help and he kind of makes it worse. And so she goes and she reads him with this Jersey song. wasn't Jersey wasn't no joke. Even Ooh. for her girlfriends, her newsy girlfriends really in the building. Because that was real. There'd be newsy people. Every every mom got a girlfriend that's newsy. That know everything in the building. The doorman, he was that was he was on his point too. Right. But but everybody them newsy girlfriends, them two, you hit it with them two. Right? They is in every neighborhood. You I got them two it. right there. They know everybody business. It. It's incredible. Yeah, they know everybody well, business. one thing they did show about the father was he wasn't available all the time but when she really needed him to show up he came through he would show up right right he was he was you could see that he was making a, he was really trying mm -hmm. and he could recognize that maybe to your point we're all growing and you could start to see like I've been flawed in this way but I can try to fix it starting now you know what I mean so mm -hmm. It's, it's layers, it's levels, and I love what you're explaining, and I love how you're saying it really reflects people you know, and yeah. that's mm -hmm. what I love about it, too. And back to the busloads of kids. Which yeah, please. We, can we come right back there? Yeah, we got to. Um, big important part, because I think there is, when kids see this show, you know, when high schoolers, middle schoolers, college kids, whoever it might be, yes. Um, this show is intergenerational. Like, you can bring your grandmother in yep. to yes. this show. It was all ages in there. Yes. You know? And you can also have, you know, my son is nine, 
and he'll he's up in here talking and screaming and is that happening what do you mean and he's he gets it you know what I mean so um that's an amazing part but I think you're right about the kids coming to see this because when they are in here and they see themselves it's over. man they are so excited to be able to feel themselves and see themselves and so we actually have created a fellowship program that allows um young people who are interested in the fields of set design lighting design, mm -hmm. costume design, yep, major. Um, choreography, mm -hmm. book writing, directing, you know, behind the scenes, all of the guys and women who are making sure that everything's flying in, flying out, set is working well, stage managing, right. all these things. To your point, there's a plethora, there's a world of opportunity out here that we can be a part of. Sound design, the, what, mm -hmm. the way the sound is being mixed in the show all of these things, obviously lyrics, writing, you know, all of these parts are parts that have to be designed and are, are a huge part of making it work. So to your point about seeing the opportunity, man, you know, and every every theater on Broadway needs all of those people. Right. And, and for you to have a fellowship to try to, to make that happen is important because mm -hmm. the kids, I always try to tell kids, make sure you know what you're looking at. What do you see? You know, uh, like you did all them, all them positions you just named is letting people know that the coaches last longer than the players. Mm. The people that costume design, you could be doing that for 50 years. You could do that forever. Ever. You're not, you know, uh, actors and actresses don't always, ball players, rappers, they not around. The CEO might be around. Mm. Phil Jackson had Kobe and he had Mike, mm. Michael Jordan. Study the game of life. Right. So, so we we got to be able to look at this stuff and think. Because all I kept saying is, if this joint is packed with kids, they're going to see something they never can imagine that exists. They don't know nothing about it, mm -hmm. and they're going to be like, "Oh man, I want to dance." And yes. I want to say this: I don't know how. Right? I'm sitting here and I'm like, only thing I kept thinking through the whole thing. How much time did it take? Because these dance moves was on point. The singing was on point. The uh, the, the the costume changes was on point. Right. It was just too like pop, 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 pop. Now, Tight. if anything went wrong, I wouldn't know. The, 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 anybody in there wouldn't know if anything was off key or on point because it was flowing so good. I'm talking about, you know what I mean? It was just like, I, I'm i like, how much time did they take to do mm. this? They like, took months. It takes a really long time. I mean, I've been developing this Hell's Kitchen for 13 years. Dang it. Like, and that means myself and the book writer were the very first two people kind of putting the story together and developing the characters and figuring out what's the meaning and where where do we where do we bring them and grow them and where does the story arc to and all these parts here. And then the director joined. Michael Greif, who the book writer is Chris Diaz, by the way, born and raised in New York as well, which was very hard to find because you're you cannot... very, very much New York, though. Yeah. No, you are Ooh. so I mean, New York. I mean, it's this ridiculous. is my ridiculous. This is my like zone. <laughs> <laughs> Sing like, to us. Because she always, anytime somebody's from New York, she lets you know. Is it, <laughs> they're from New York as well. <laughs> no, the <laughs> reason the, I say that. This is what the dreams are made of. One. And two is because you're writing a New York story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You cannot be writing a New York story and not have experienced Absolutely. New York. Absolutely. In the way that we're talking about it in the '90s, in this moment yeah. where culturally it was I'm talking like about one the clothes, the, the hair, I feel it. Everything, you know, everything was right everything. there, right on the spot. Everything y'all had on, the Tommy over the food, everything was right <laughs> there. The hairstyles, it was like. Yes. See, I respect it because I'm a full, full fledged Philadelphia. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, I'm Philly. Everything. You Eagles, understand. Sixers, Flyers, <laughs> Phillies. <laughs> Fucking soul, your temple of okay. sound. So I understand when you like, no, it's New York. It has to be, it has to ring right, or else be, it's fake, and then be, you feel it. It can't and, be. That. And what's so important about that? Everybody in the world come to New York to visit. Mm -hmm. You can't tell a New York story without being able to visualize it to people that don't know. Right. Because there's so many people that was, it's so many people that was in that crowd. So many diversity. So many age, like. I yeah. know that they didn't know, but they got it. Right. And they was able to say, walk away and say, damn, you know, I learned a lot. Or mm -hmm. I didn't know this or the dress code. And it was because it was like, I'm telling you, it was a melting pot in there. Every, mm. What New York is, when you walk down the street, you seen it inside of Hell's Kitchen that night. Mm. 
Oh my gosh, that's so good. Come and, tell them yeah. And I feel like the, I feel like the the cool thing is that it is a New York story, but it's also everybody's story mm -hmm. because everybody has a community around them, mm -hmm. a mother, a father, a mother mm -hmm. connection, a father connection, a, you know, being mm -hmm. 17. So even without knowing that whole New York energy, correct, totally, you, it's a family story. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's actually a love story between a mother and a daughter. That's ultimately what it actually ends up being. But one thing mm -hmm. you can do that, and I, and I don't think people understand this now, that I seen growing up, uh, uh, in the inner cities, 80s and 90s, everybody that was a part of the story was helping. And this is mm -hmm. how the community used to be. They mm -hmm. was helping raise Ollie. That's right. I'm talking about from the doorman right. to the girlfriends to the police that knew you. I'm talking about the, like everybody was like, you know, they was like, they was helping. And that's how the community used to be. Mm -hmm. Everybody had hands on, well, what you doing? Why you here? Mm -hmm. Get down. I'm going to tell your mom. Like it was just that whole thing that mm -hmm. you can't do that no more. Don't, don't, you know what I mean? It's a little different now. You can't wow. be. You can't check nobody. You had the authority to check somebody's kid at one time. Right. If you saw them out of pocket. Because that's your, you know yeah. them, you know their mother, you grew yeah. up with them, you were, mm -hmm. like, this is your, you love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You love them. So my, I, I feel you. My, my daughter is in a room, and even with the story that went on Hell's Kitchen, that same thing went on in our household, mm. where she got to a certain age, you know. She ain't, she ain't got a check. She space. You know, she got a check. She needed her space. Right. She told us, I'm moving out. And you was like, no. No, I was like, get out. My <laughs> mom was at the door like, no, no. Yeah, he was, get yeah. out, man. I'm like, wait, you think it's easy out there? Oh, okay, go. get your ass out there then. then. Go, go, go. Listen, I didn't know they made three-month leases. Yeah. <laughs> and then she was back, back, back. So three months. I <laughs> saying stuff like, oh, my God, tampons are so expensive. <laughs> no, I know. I, I feel like I had that same experience with my mother, that so, exact same experience. But, but for me... It's always a, a sense of, babe, we raised a good person. Mm. Sometimes they get to a certain age where they got to figure it out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now she thinks she ain't never moving out. She got life messed up, though. She only got a couple more years. And that's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, right. she had to figure it out. Right. You know, and her mom didn't want her to figure it out. Her mom didn't want And it's like, no, she's at an age where it's though now... She has to determine some things. Yeah. And that same story right. went on in Hell's Kitchen where right. her daughter was like, you know what? I got to figure some things out. And her mom didn't want her to do it, but her mom understood at the end that, you know what? I raised a good person mm. and I got to allow her to, if she's going to make some mistakes out here, she's going to have to make them because I made my mistakes. Right. So and if she and I just gotta hope and pray that she do right, right. and then she don't bump her head too hard. You know what I mean? Cause it's hard though. It, it's that's scary. a part of life. You know, it is. It is. You know and what I mean? I love that. I love that. But I'm glad that we allowed her to go ahead and make her mistakes and bump her head a little bit at 18 and 19, opposed to 27 and 28. Right, right. Where she's now enabled or incapable or not necessarily, you know, really. Right. Having the having the knowledge, her own knowledge, her Absolutely. own wisdom. Yeah, so I major. love that. Absolutely. You know what I want to know? This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by DraftKings. The Greens at Augusta will soon host golf's greatest players, and DraftKings is bringing you closer to action with a major offer to celebrate the tournament. This week, all customers can deposit $10 or more and receive a ticket to DraftKings Millie Maker contest for a shot at $1 million top prize. Playing is easy. Assemble a team of golfers while staying under the salary cap. Then sit back as your players score points. Download the DraftKings app and use code Gilly to play free for a shot at $1 million. Download that app right now and use that code Gilly. Hurry up. G-I-L-L-I-E. What is you waiting on? Download right now. Add that code in Gilly. $1 million top prize. Only DraftKings with code Gilly. The crown is yours. The crown is yours. Download DraftKings right now and use code Gilly. I'm going to tell you all one more time for a free shot at $1 million top prize. Only on DraftKings with code Gilly. Gilly! The crown is yours. 
DraftKings. And I, and I said, this is one of the things I wanted to ask you. Can you describe the feelings that was going on inside of you <laughs> as you sat there and watched it yourself? See, don't worry about us but in the crowd. But it's like, because we, listen, I, I peeped you soon as... The, 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 the fire, no, no. As soon as they start firing the shots and the police sounds came, she jump up. I said, yo, that's AK-47 right there. <laughs> yeah, he did. I'm like, yo, because we right here. You, you right here. We right on the end. I don't you know why you gave you that that's AK-47 right there. I'm like, yo, what is he talking about? You know you remix people names. You know you remix people name in the streets. So I'm like, so I'm like, yo, she jumped up. I'm like, she was there the whole time. So for you, the first time, you're inside. You're you, all the applause, all the standing ovations. How, like, could you describe your feeling of watching your? This is your thing. Like, how was you feeling? First of all, this is a funny question because I think after that show, I really did try to find the words that would express how I felt, and I had a really hard time. Like, I to this, I'm still struggling with coming up with the words. But I, let me take you to why, you know, and I think that. The way that I, the way that it feels, you know, coming from as a kid in the in the in the music game, and you know, recognizing how much we don't know. You're talking about like studying the game of life, yeah. and how much we don't know, and therefore how much is taken from us, or how much we give away because we don't realize mm -hmm. one how important we are. We don't realize that we're creating our own IPs. We're creating our own intellectual <laughs> properties, properties uh -huh. that we are meant to own, but other people own them because we don't I have know. the finances to be able to finance them. Uh -huh. And so we have to depend on other people who then take our intellectual properties and, and take ownership of what we've created. So obviously all artists go through this, I as well. And so I spent a large part of my later life as an artist figuring out how to get it back uh -huh. so that it would belong to me. And so when it came time to create Hell's Kitchen, I knew that I it was very important that I owned every step of the way. Uh -huh. And that it was important that nobody else could own this story. And so I spent a lot of time making sure that was happening based of what off based off of what I learned in the music industry. Uh -huh. So I always said to myself <coughs> This is, I'm gonna make this, this is going to be, whatever I didn't do right before, I'm gonna do this right. Yeah. And so now fast forward, I do, I do own this IP mm -hmm. and I've been able to maintain ownership of it. And I'm also the lead producer, which as a black woman on Broadway is very, very rare. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very proud. And the cast is proud and the whole team is proud that I'm the lead producer of this show because of what that significance of what it says. And so when I'm watching this show, I'm not only watching the phenomenal actors and how well they not only act and sing, but dance and emote and express how they're doing this live in the moment. They're mm -hmm. not missing a beat. They mm -hmm. have the emotional connection as if it's yes. the first time every time. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the way that it looks and how beautiful it's being executed and all that it took to create the marketing and the proper logos and all the things that you're seeing in there that just blend into nothing, all the work that it took to be so meticulous. I'm looking at the audience and I'm seeing all the conversations we had on the phone. Like we have to make sure that this audience is diverse. This has to be a diverse audience. And I'm hearing you say that you saw a melting pot of yeah. people that represent New York and, and the world in the seats. So this is what I'm taking in when I'm watching. And that's the reason why the words don't really come so I can't even properly tell you how I feel yeah. because it's too deep. You're still you know, processing it. I am way processing. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about our ancestors. I'm thinking of all the people that never, you know, they put in everything they put in our families, our ancestors to hope that we could make new tracks in the road, that we could carve new paths. And this is part of carving new paths. And yes, so it is. That's what I'm feeling. So I am completely overwhelmed, honestly. And, and I'm also feeling hot, like tough as nails as I'm like, I'm holding the space for the, 
for everything to come together. Oh. And so I feel grateful. I feel excited. I feel thrilled. I'm happy. I'm jubilant. I'm transcendent. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm all these things. I can't even tell you how I feel. I can't even tell you for right now. You, you know what? You, you know what's crazy? Hold on. <laughs> what was crazy is that we watched, like, I felt like we watched maybe an hour show. And then they was like, okay. We was leaving. We thought like, it was over. We thought, <laughs> the we, intermission. We, we didn't was know. Like, we oh never my been God, to the play. That shit was crazy. We was like, man, it. Because you left. So right, I'm like, like, oh, yeah. you jumped it's, I'm like, it's over. Up. It's over. As soon as you jumped Done. up on the lights, over. We was like, we had already spotted you by then. So by the intermission, you got up first. Oh, we like, she getting out of here. Yeah, it's going to be over. traffic. We rolling. <laughs> so like, I go to the door. I'm like, is it over? He said, no, that's an admission. I my said, wife oh, was oh. like, my wife's like, hold on, babe. I don't think that was. I'm like, babe, that was like an hour, hour and 20 minutes. She was like, no, that was just the intermission. So we was like, oh, okay. okay. So we went back and sat down. Let's go sit back down. Yeah. Let's go sit back I'm glad it was only the intermission because that thing only got better and better Ooh, and better. It oh, takes my off. God. And you, and you know what's important? Wow. I want to stop. I want to stop. And I want to congratulate you on Yes. Mm. She said, I think we, we got to make sure we highlight this. The only black woman producer on, on Broadway, right? Not the only one. One of. But it's rare. But it's rare. It's but getting let me, more. Let me it's say getting this. more. Let me say this, though, and because we got to clarify this. Mm -hmm. She's not a producer, a black woman producer on Broadway because she's Alicia Keys. She's on here because of the execution, the quality of the product that she brought to the the, the fans. It was it was next yes. level. That's one thing I want to say. So I gotta congratulate you on that. Cause this is this ain't no cause sometimes mm. I, I gotta get that through because us as people, and I gotta speak for our people, black people, a lot of times, instead of turning it up and just be all that we could be, we mm. make excuses on other people's success. And we try mm. to download dilute other people's success based off of somewhere, oh she already no, she accomplished this over here. Mm, Over right. here is work that's put in. This is raw, uh, fresh work, putting a great team together. Yes. Mm. Don't dilute that because she's Alicia Keys and say, oh, yeah, it's going to be easy for her. She could just call somebody. Because that's how we be thinking sometimes. And, and instead of looking in the mirror and say, damn, I'm not doing what I need to do to be great. Mm. And I might be failing in life. We try to dilute other people's successes in life. And we got to stop doing it as our people. Now, mm. number two, she says something that's very important. And I don't want this to go over your head. She said, you know, in the beginning, she created intellectual property. Intellectual property is a whole division of law. In intellectual property got attorneys, IP attorneys. So let me give you the game. Intellectual property is when you make that music or when you design them clothes mm -hmm. or when you design that art or when you take that photography or, or when you design clothes. All type of things is intellectual when property. When you start that podcast. When you start that podcast. The po like all this stuff. And like she said, something that's so important. You ain't got to start believing in ourselves at the beginning because what we do, we think, oh, only them can make me pop. We live in a world now where we got this, a satellite in our pocket. Mm. We got this. You could go in here. You could file your intellectual property, on, get a lawyer, whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? Uh, take that out of here. They're not paying us. I ain't mean to say that. Find you an attorney. <laughs> you think what I'm saying? That That's an IP attorney that know that stuff. But what I'm saying is this. We got to start believing in ourselves more yep. and understanding that. Something got to be up if you telling me that I got this, that I created in the basement on the street corner with the homies, with my homegirls, and you're trying to give me all that money right now. That's right. This got to be worth something. That's I need right. to hold on to this. I need to hold on to my masters. I need to hold on to the ownership. You know what I mean? I, we got to stop transferring ownership mm. for momentary monet monetization. Right. Because mm. somebody give us this money. We like, oh, this is this is everything. We're going to run through that in a month or two. But you mean to tell me you, you, you going to be owning, I'm going to be transferring ownership to my stuff beyond life? I'm going to be dead and you still going to own my stuff? Thanks. Mm -hmm. We got to start thinking about that yeah. because 300000 sound cool for, but you mean to tell me that 300000 is worth you monetizing off of my creativity once I'm dead and my people not benefiting off this? And then after that 300000 after you made Thirty million off it. I gotta come and battle with you to try to get my intellectual property back. That's a fact. I gotta try to battle with you to get the transfer. You can transfer it back over to me because most people are not establishing trans the the the, um, the, revision. the, the, the revision inside of the contract. The They're just like, oh yeah, you got it. no. So we got to start thinking more, and that's why intellectual property is very important. That's why she said, I'm going to make sure that Hell's Kitchen 
the intellectual property is retained by me. Yes. And that's important. This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by Aura Watch. Throughout March Madness, you can get hundreds of dollars off dope-ass watches from Aura with code MDWOG. Check these joints out. Look, uh, the red one, uh, the black and kind of like brown. Mm, look at this. Look at this. Mm, this is the Aquaman watch. This is the Aquaman. This is the Nipsey Hussle blue. Look, this actually, I, I like this. This, this. this is the one I be rocking the most right now. You know, Aura has high quality luxury watch brand without the luxury price tag. So you're getting a, a great watch without being overcharged. With solid stainless steel cases, high quality, automatic movement, sapphire crystals, and FKM rubber straps, Aura's attention to detail and craftsmanship shows through each watch. Aura is designed to look, feel, and function like luxury timepieces without the luxury price tag. If you like clean, if you like something that's your go-to, Aura.watch slash M-D-W-O-G, that's Aura. Aura.watch slash M-D-W-O-G. Use that code for $100 off a watch. There's no limit to how many watches you can get with the discount code. So go wild. Aura Watch. Get $100 off. Look at it. Do your thing. It's all about the aura. What is your aura? Mine's just these nice watches right here. I'm gonna unbox one so you can see it. You can check it out. Mm, look at this. Look at this. You see it? You see these? Oh, 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 look at this. God, come. Uh, let's, let's get busy. Wham! Oh, it's still not there. Oh. Okay, the all black one. Yeah. Aura. Go get your watch now. Code MDWOG. We're going to treat you right. Right. Yes. That's what we did with me and I was worth a game. Wow. Coming into the game early. We on everything. We, we, you know, six months in, you know, shout out to Spotify. Shout out to the people over there because they did come to us. They did offer us some, some millions of dollars. You know what I mean? Courtney Hope. Courtney Hope. Shout out to Courtney. You know, he offered us some millions of dollars, but they wanted our pro intellectual property. They wanted to own us, and we was like, no, nah, we'd rather just bet on ourselves. Mm. And we did that and got five times what they was offering us. So, and still owned our stuff. Shout still owned our stuff. So shout out to Barstool. Shout out to Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy. Shout out to Eric and Eric Nardini, Nardini as well Dave. for believing in us, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And understanding. Important. Absolutely. It's important, and it is a big deal that mm -hmm. you that you clarifying. That's Virgins. important because a lot of times um, they hear they hear something that don't know what IP is. They might be like, "Oh, what's that? and we think it's so lightly," and we be like, "Man, I'm coming up in the ghetto of, of Bronx. I'm coming up in Hell's Kitchen. I got this tape. I made these songs. You know what I mean? They want to give me, you know, four or five hundred thousand. I only made." 40, 50,000 on it. No, they timing it. They know what they're going to do once they put the machine on it. Right. So they like, if we're going to give you a machine, well, you could have kept running. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's real deep. And to speak about intellectual property, shout out to the Dean's Collection. Mm, shout out to Giants. Thank you. Uh, you know, because Giants, mm. you know, the reason you can name it Giants because making giant moves. Mm. You know what I mean? Brooklyn mm. Museum. Um, and because mm. it's two Giants that's doing it. That's, that's, Mm. It's two giants you know doing it. Shout out to Swiss. Mm. Shout out to Swiss. My baby. Like, like, like. Shout out to the big dog. <laughs> We've been a big dog for 25, 30 years. Yeah, he's the real deal. You know, so, and, it, and it's good to see that, uh, it's good to see, you know, people that come from the ghettos from America able to elevate in such a beautiful way. Mm. To, through to, you through know, love. Through love. Mm. Don't you know, forget that. Thank elevate you. in such a different way to, you know, that... We, when you come up in the ghetto, you know, you don't even think that it's possible that you would be doing things like this when you what? get to this age. You know what I mean? Because, you know, the environment that you grew up in, it, it taught you that did not even believe that that shit is possible. For you. For you. You know, you know what I mean? You, 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 was, you feel that, you know, 
the same people that I see every day, I'm going to see these people for the rest of my life. Mm. You know, I may not never have new neighbors. Mm. I may be stuck to this 10 block radius for my whole entire life. You know, some people where we come from, they believe a vacation is going through a toll booth. Right. You know, That's right. you could be from Philly and you drive 45 minutes to Atlantic City and you get a call and you tell a motherfucker, yo, I'm OT. I hit you when I get back. Motherfucker. <laughs> You not OC. Yeah. You 48 minutes away. What are you talking about? But Listen, that's whatever the, it got to be. That's the mindset. But I you know you. what I mean? And it's and it's a f***ed up mindset. And until you see things, until you, you know, you do things and you get out, that's, that's when mm-hmm. your mindset starts to broaden and you start to realize that it's a whole big world out here right. and my my life was just confined to a 10 block radius because I grew up in an environment where my family didn't have money we wasn't able to take trips we were able to do things so you know mm-hmm. we grew up behind the eight ball so mm-hmm. when you when you come from these 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 ghettos and you're able to look up 20 years and you got your shit in museums and mm-hmm. shit like that and you're mm-hmm. doing plays on Broadway and it just lets you know that we the real MVPs. And I want to say this. You you know what I'm saying? You and Swiss. We the real MVPs because we not supposed to be here. Mm. No, and you, you Everything and in life says we're not supposed to be here. But it's not true. Yeah. But and, we here. And you right. and Swiss. So we the real MVPs. I yeah. love that. You and Swiss is, is I'm going to call you all the um, BAAs. Black or amplifiers. Mm. So, 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 what I'm saying is this: I don't like from Hell's Kitchen to Giants. Y'all amplifying black art, mm. and y'all, 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 y'all showing the value of mm. black art, the importance of black art, the uh, existence of black art. Uh, why was that important to y'all? When y'all said, "Where was y'all at? Um, what was y'all doing?" When y'all say, "We gonna." You know, we're going to start collecting. We're going to st- where, where, where did it start? Like, how Man, did it begin? Thank you for asking that. Uh, first, I want to say, wow. First, this conversation, I'm, I'm in love with this whole conversation so mm. much. I love what we're talking about, all the levels and layers of it. Um, I love y'all show. I love thank you. how y'all thank do you. this. Um, I think for, I wanted to go back to Giants because Giants is at the Brooklyn Museum. And mm. we actually went yesterday with our family, just mm. us, mm. because, you know, it's just that important. You know, I mean, we just do not see art created by us at the scale that you're going to see it at the Brooklyn Museum yeah. mm-hmm. ever. And, and, and the most beautiful thing is everybody who passes through the Brooklyn Museum come from all over the, the world. world. And they are able to see this greatness and the the, the masterful hands at work that you see on display, and it's mm-hmm. incredible. And so we really call the giants, not because we're the giants, because they are oh, the, the giants. giants. I like that. You know what I mean? Because the artists, this is giant, masterful work, and those who have created this work are the giants. And we don't often get to celebrate them either. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes they find themselves in similar cir- circumstances that we just spoke about, in all of our neighborhoods, talking about intellectual properties and ownership, and oftentimes, you know, they die, and they know me, and and they stuff is all over the world, and all these people own the whole uh, anthology of their stuff, and they never like they people's ain't got nothing, no, nothing. They would have sold their first work for twenty thousand dollars because they're just coming up, mm-hmm. and twenty years later, their work is worth thirty million dollars, and mm-hmm. someone pays that for their work. And their estate or their children or their families don't have not one piece of it. And that's actually, Swiss um, came up with something called the Dean's Choice. And it really is about starting to create a foundation where those art buyers are able to opt into the Dean's Choice and say that they want to, if, they've, if, if, it's a, if they're getting 100% more um, value on the work, what percentage do you want to go back to the artists? And mm-hmm. so it's it's a new concept, and these are the type of things that we want to be a part of, cr- creating new cultures and creating new ways to do it. And so 
Um, and so at so when we started collecting, he's been collecting for even longer than I. Mm -hmm. He actually is an artist and he and he paints. Mm -hmm. And so when we first met, he started to introduce me to a bunch of artists, and I couldn't believe he knew all this stuff. I was like, mm -hmm. what? You see what I'm wearing today? Well, yeah, mm -hmm. rough this rider. is the Rough Rider. That's me. Yes. And I was like, how do you know all it's of this that. stuff mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. all of this information? It's so wild. And he was so, like, he really was passionate about art. And so he had been collecting um, for many years. And then we started collecting together because we started seeing that there was this really incredible opportunity for a lot of young black artists and and you know we collect all art we call we collect art so there's many different colors in yeah. our collection and many yeah, different races in our collection but we were seeing that there were these young black artists who were just doing spectacular shit and we were like whoa they are incredible mm -hmm. and just by mere passion and love of the work as an artist seeing other artists doing beautiful things, right. we wanted to start to create relationships with these artists. And so mm. we did that in a very organic way. And so we'd be able to, to, we'd have, you know, we'd go to their studios and they'd come to our house and we would exchange and communicate and conversate. And so we started to collect a lot of work prior to what now I would consider is a big boom in collection of black art. It is much, it is kind of the thing to do now. My crib. And so, um, and so it was beautiful to be able to uplift so many of these artists first before a lot of people got mm -hmm. to know them. And I really credit Swiss with that. He really had the vision for that. He has a, he has an incredible instinct and he really can tell like what's going to happen before it even happens. So he has a amazing vision. And we started to collect all these, you know, kind of larger artworks. He speaks about this a lot because oftentimes black artists are not asked or commissioned to do very large works either. Those are oftentimes not black artists. And so he wanted to start seeing larger scopes on the walls, mm -hmm. you know? And so one of our first large pieces is Kehinde Wiley. It is a huge, it's massive. And it really didn't fit anywhere. A lot of people can't fit it on your wall. How are you gonna hang such a huge piece? You like, you don't have the space for it. But to be able to give the opportunity for these works to be oversized works, and that's what you see at the at, at Brooklyn Museum. If you haven't gone to see Giants, man, you your mind is gonna be blown. You are going to feel uplifted in a yes. way that you didn't even realize. Mm -hmm you are going to feel once you walk in and walk out. It is, for us too, we are overwhelmed again and also excited that that the this work can be at the Brooklyn Museum. You know see. what's crazy? I'm getting my art collection. Have you seen it in the crib? Yes, he you know do. I mean? he shout, out, shout out to Kenneth Picasso. Uh, he from uh, outside of Philly. You got mm -hmm. artists like King Solid Neem yes. from Philly making their moves. Shout out to all them, yes. all the artists doing their thing. Yeah, you got a bootleg uh, ass art collection. Oh, you hating on my collection. I'm going to do We like your collection. You yeah, he hating on you. Gotta, I'm going to show you some I stuff. I need to see your collection. I'm going to show you some stuff, but I'm going to say this, though. Um, first of all, I'm going through this stuff. Uh, you know, since we left the uh, the uh, the theater the other day, I've been doing on planes all over. Right. I'm starting to break out. I, I, I need a Harmony Honey mask, right? <laughs> Now, now, I, can, I can can I? I need one. I need okay, one because I, I got a bump right here. So I'm trying to figure that out uh, now <laughs> it, because you know, key soul care take care of the soul. So mm. I got I got to put I got to take care of my soul in order for my outer to look good. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I was eating stuff. I don't know where I was at, but I need my soul. You know what I mean? Taken care of. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So it, it, it's a and and I need you to just mm. I need you to break down mm. like because I think sometimes. Dudes think they can't wear masks or whatever. Uh, like, like we gotta, we gotta break that, all that stuff down Please. and understand. Like, you gotta take care of yourself. Yes. And Key say we're gonna take care of your soul with Key Soul Care. So yes. I'm gonna get because this bump right here is joint is annoying me. I don't know what I don't what know what happened. Bumps. I mean, shut up. When you be doing all the scratching. Oh. Like, right, he hate, he oh. Oh. Stuff. Oh. So, so listen, I don't know what he talking about. I mean, he might be. I mean, talking about them bed bugs he be having. But I'm gonna say this. You get the mask, you get the mask, put it on your face, and it's just gonna go away. Cause it's take care of the soul. How mm. did that how did that come about? Key soul care. Why is that important to you? I love it. Mean? I and love I see what your skin be glowing. About. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and I think that comes back to what we were talking about with this idea that we have been inherited, that we can't, we don't deserve certain things. Right. Or we can't 
find ourselves in certain places so we don't belong in certain yep. places like at the Brooklyn Museum mm -hmm. or on Broadway or wherever that might be outside right. of this mm -hmm. 10 block radius. Right. And I think that, you know, when it comes to soul care, that's something that I more recently learned about the importance of really being able to care about your inner, your spirit, yes. you know? And a lot of times we're, we're, we're so caught up with what's on the outer or how people look on the external or what we can what get. What people think. Mm -hmm. What people think that we forget how to tune in or never taught or no one showed us how to tune in to what's inside of us already. Mm -hmm. Like what's, what type of instinct do you have? What type of intuition do you have? And how do we protect ourselves from a lot of toxic relationships because in the world there's so much toxic shit around us. Yes. And we mm -hmm. just learn how to deal with it because we're so incredibly strong yeah. mm -hmm. that we figure out, okay, okay, I'm not gonna let that bother me. Or we figure out, well, that's just how they are. I'm, you know, that's who they are. I'm just gonna accept it. No, right. we don't have to accept any of the toxic energy, the the, the negativity, the hate, the, the horribleness, the right. traumas. We got so many things that we're trying to work through and we just kind of feel like, well, that's, you know, that's what I'm supposed to be feeling like or what I'm supposed to be dealing with. And we don't. So the question is, how do we get more in touch with our soul? How do mm -hmm. we get more in touch with our spirit? And I think that there is, um, this is kind of a conversation. Key soul care is a conversation about how do you start putting the things that you need inside of your spirit right. so that when you reflect to the world, you actually feel good about yourself because we just don't often feel that good about ourselves. And so that's the idea. And so every bottle has an affirmation. An affirmation might be, mm -hmm. um, you know, I shine at full wattage or an affirmation might be, um, I'm, I, I welcome all circumstances as a catalyst for change. That's mm -hmm. my favorite one because we get into this thing where we're like, this happened to me, that's bad. This mm -hmm. happened to me, that's good. Mm -hmm. right. But what if everything that happened is just a catalyst for change? Like you get to receive it and be like, now I'm going to move like this because right. of it, right. you know, whatever the case might be. So going back to men, I think that that's right. I'm raising boys and we're raising boys. And I think a lot of times men do feel like, you know, we caring hygiene is super important. Yes. And actually doing the basics, washing your face. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. You might even put a scrub on your face. Told him that since he come home from jail, he washed twice a week. Mm -hmm. Stop. I've been telling he him lying. that. He lying. Stop. He ain't no me. He ain't lying. No, he ain't, he ain't washing no twice a week. Every <laughs> yeah. day. Every day. You're brushing your teeth, you're washing your face. And this yeah. is a part of just like that, you know, when you care about yourself, you put time into yourself yes. and you don't have to feel bad for caring about yourself. It's, when mm -hmm. you care about yourself, then you can start to produce different things in the world because you know that you're valuable. Right. And you get to be valuable. Don't let nobody tell you you're not valuable. You Talk are valuable. You are the only one like you. Yes. You got to take care of you. Nobody else is going to do it. So I think you're exactly right. So that's what Key Soul Care really is about. It's about that, that essence and that idea about taking care of your soul first so that oh. you can go out and do amazing things because you... You got a foundation for you that's solid. Now, outside, everybody out there, you get Key Soul Care on Key keys with an S, soulcare.com. But where else can they find it? Like they just walking around and they, where can they oh, find it at? You can also get it on Amazon, which is my favorite because mm, okay. you just be like, the uh, next day, bang. Everybody got, right everybody there. got it. Bang. Bang. Amazon, Amazon, pay right Amazon. Know what I right mean? there to you. <laughs> Right. They, they get it to you fast. Quick. Amazing. Ulta yeah. and, Saf and Sephora Canada and Douglas if you're out the country. Mm, so that's major. Mm. They telling us, um, I us keep saying, you know, the, oh, port, the, the other important lady in the room, she keep oh, doing like this, oh, like man, it's a hurricane really. coming. You know? Mm. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. This, this is going outside. I know. This is I just wanted Miss Keys to play the piano just one time. Yeah, you know what I mean? Oh, you know what we do? I cool, did see y'all cool. set me by here. Yeah, well, yes, you want to say? Yes. Sing the song. No, no, go sing. Oh, what song, which song you what song? want? Tell us so you can sing the song. I ain't got nothing. No, go uh, up there and sing the song. You want to sing it? Yes, yeah, so come on. Oh, hell yeah, this is a dream coach. Oh. Everything, listen, tap into everything. Giants, 
Soul Care is going down and it's just like that. <laughs>